Hope you guys are having a great morning, and I hope you're getting excited for tonight. Uh, I personally am, as we continue to jump into this series about freedom. I know Jen Long kind of killed it last week, and it was fantastic. So tonight we're actually uh, doing our intro, more or less, and setting up this idea of freedom and where we're going with uh, grace, faith, pride, and worship over these next four or five weeks. So I kind of wanted to just let you know that. Also want to let you know, uh, we're going to begin to do a big challenge. I feel in my spirit, I feel in my heart, it's uh, time for our students to begin to live their faith Um, I've been talking to a lot of you uh, as small group leaders. I've been talking to a lot of the students at the student roundtable. And there's been kind of a breakdown between um, the restore vision, right, of how do we actually restore our faith. So over the next few weeks, you guys are going to be hearing me communicate um, these five principles. And I want to let you know that that as a leader, um, especially as a small group leader, this is how we challenge our students to mature their faith. So uh, worship actually engaging in worship, understanding the difference between uh, praising God and worshiping God, giving him glory for who he is no matter how our day has been, and worshiping in an awe and a reverence and a wonder, and actually just pressing in. Uh, reading our Bible, we talked about it a couple weeks ago, um, how the, the word is alive and it's sharper than a two-edged sword, how the word is seed that gets planted in us. And we need to begin to challenge our students that at this stage in the game, they need to begin to feed themselves. And we're going to talk about that more uh, going forward. But really, service is like eating out at a restaurant. It's a decent meal. You remember it. Maybe it exposes you to something new. But you have to be feeding yourself daily, right? The bread of life. Uh, Prayer. Really, that's intimacy with God. That's talking with God. And that's more than a prayer at night. That's you knowing that you have a, a God and a Father who loves you and wants to be with you. And that we need to teach them how to engage. So when students come and ask for prayer, force them to pray for themselves first and then respond and pray after them. So those are kind of our three personal things, worship, prayer, and reading the word. The the two public things are being in small group, being in community with each other, right? Iron sharpens iron. Words of a friend can be trusted. Um, And then also serving. There's something special and amazing that, that happens when we serve. So when students ask about how to grow in their faith, when students say they need uh, a deeper teaching or it's not going you know, good enough for them in life, begin to ask questions about those five things. Hey, when was the last time you consistently read your Bible for a week? When you read your Bible, do you underline and take notes? Are you, are you praying beforehand and asking God to speak to you? It's something that we have to learn. It's a discipline and they need to hear that. Hey, when was the last time you prayed to God about something difficult going on in your life or in the midst of something? something going on in your life? When was the last time you really engaged in worship, not for you, but for God? Are you in a small group? Are you being vulnerable? Are you being real in that group? Are you actually making it have value? Are you just showing up? You know, where are you serving? Where is God leading you and growing you? Where are you learning the skill sets and being challenged by investing in someone else? For us as a ministry, these are the five ways that a student matures themselves. As adults, these are the five things that we do as believers to make our faith our own. So I wanted to kind of encourage you guys with that as we begin uh, being intentional about pushing this idea of finding the one and being in our community and making a move. Our students need to know that for themselves, they have the five tools. They just got to do it. And tonight we're kind of teasing on that a little bit, but we're really going into it next week. Now, I also want to let you guys know on April 17th and 18th, that's Friday night and all day Saturday, we are hosting a Desperation Weekend. Um, It's a little bit different than last year's Night of Desperation in the fact that it's actually going to be a two-day event. There'll be four sessions uh, the Desperation Band's going to be here, Dan Perkins, Caleb Culver, Amy Perkins, Brandon Cormier. We're really having like a Desperation Tees event on our campus. And so I, I'm looking for two things with that. One, if you're a small group leader, I want to challenge you to challenge your group to really find and invest and bring the one. Bring people. This is the opportunity for life change. This is the opportunity for us to invite them into something. And then for the rest of us, uh, we're looking for you to actually uh, uh, operate in your same team that you would on a Wednesday night. So if you do check-in, we're going to need people who do check-in and do bracelets. If you're on the safety team, we need people to kind of be safety that weekend. We're tapping into our Sunday crew for parking in the cafe. But this is our first opportunity as a church to do kind of uh, uh, an outreach, uh, an out-of-house conference. So we're looking for you guys to help out with that. I hope you're excited as I am. Um, The cost is going to be somewhere between 
between 20 and 25 bucks. The link is live and we are announcing it to our students tonight. So begin to pray. Begin to pray for life change. I really feel like we're going to double again. I really feel like we're going to do it this semester. I feel like God is just going to blow this up, not because we want to build a ministry, but because we want to begin to live in our identity. I love you guys, and I'll talk to you soon.